Okay, we're back live in New Orleans, Sunbelt Conference Media Day. Adam Witten, Brett Strelo, now joined by head coach Sean Clark. Mountaineers pick to win the East Division. They have the preseason offensive player of the year, Joey Aguilar, and coming off a great season where they won nine games and a bowl game. And this year it is, what, Mission 24? Is that the slogan? Tell us about it. Mission 24. You know, 23 was about a re the reset, and, and 24 is about finishing the mission. So we came back from uh, the bowl game back in December. That was our first team meeting that, that we met. They brought it to the team, and um, again, it's, it's, it fits what we do right now. So, um, yeah, just media day. It's a lot of times similar questions. What are some of the things that have been kind of the most prominent and prevalent questions you've got about the the 2024 Mountaineers? Well, again, uh, probably the most is having the the preseason All Conference Player Player of the Year in our conference, and then then pick to win the Sun Belt East or win the Sun Belt uh, Conference. And those are all good things, good accolades. Uh, you, you want to be picked first instead of last, so we're not going you know walk away from it. But again, those are preseason rankings, and and they're always fun. But again, you know you you spend from January to July, work on the culture of your program. And then come August, that's where you really find out what you have. And again, Mass, uh, Matt Green has an unbelievable job this summer uh, with the workouts. And they're in shape, they're ready to go. And then they have two more workouts this week. They have a, they run Howard's Novel on Friday, have a few days off, and we report next Thursday. So we're looking forward to it. Football is here. This is actually the, this is the official kickoff to yeah. um, the 2024 season. We've had a great time. So here's thus far. I had great food last night, mm. great desserts today. So um, this is an exciting time to be a Mountaineer. You know, we were talking a little bit earlier, and specifically with Joey, but I guess you could say this about a lot of the guys, including Caden Robinson, who got first-team all-conference selection. So many guys had great statistical seasons a year ago, and Joey broke all sorts of single-season records. But you were very confident in terms of, None of this stuff go into these guys' heads. You know, a lot is Joey's going to have come in with high expectations. The team's going to come in with high expectations. But you're not necessarily worried about any of that going to anybody's head, correct? Not at all. And I've had a few questions today. Is it's really pressure on you to win? There's always pressure at App State. But no, there's just expectations. You want to be in a program that has high expectations. You don't want to be in a program where, you know, six and six is, is good enough. You want to be competing for championships year in and year out. And and we've done that. We've, we've won bowl games, have some rank, ranked teams. Teams, ranked wins in, in our tenure here. So um, I have no issues. I'm pretty confident. I know I'm confident in saying our, it won't go to our players' heads. And our guys just want to win, represent the A in, 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 a, in the right way. You mentioned having some good food. I guess this is your fifth media day down here. And we've obviously been to New Orleans for bowls. When he is the dean of Sunbelt. Yeah, I was going to try, to, I was gonna try to make that stick. <laughs> Do you like that? You, you okay with that name? Yeah, this is the fourth time we've been to New Orleans the, the, during the COVID year. We did it uh, virtually. Yeah. yeah, I believe. But no, it's uh, again. You mentioned it. Uh, it's hard to believe that I'm the longest tenured head coach in the Sun Belt Conference, and after five short years, really four seasons, going on my fifth year. So, but it's a tough conference. Um, again, players are going to go and come and go. I've been fortunate enough to be able to stick around at for uh, the last four years, and look here be here for a long time. And uh, again, I think you're as good as your players. I think this year we have a really good football team. Guys are eager to to get back, get to work. I think mean, you know you went when uh, your last five of the regular season last year. Uh, you play the championship game. You go to win the bowl game in a tropical storm. And this kind of gave us a jump start to the 2024 season, and our kids have not looked back yet. Well, coming down here so often, are there, you know, we start to go to some of the same restaurants. You start to get, are there some go to dishes that maybe, all right, this is in, when I go to New Orleans, I want this kind of meal, I want this kind of food? <laughs> well, last night, you, you were there as well. I think we, we put a dent on the oysters. Yeah, I think it was <laughs> everything night. on some of Oyster, yeah. shrimp. <laughs> Uh, gator tail, boudin balls, and, uh -huh. and again, it was great food. I, I, if I if I lived down here, I'd probably be 500 pounds unless you <laughs> eat. But a uh, great meal last night. I had a chance to go in and uh, get some rest. And you know, it's 7:30 this morning. We've been going full speed, and uh, we'll have this one. We we'll go to the Superdome here shortly, and then I think one more, one or two more interviews, and head back to Boone. So um, it's been a great event, and uh, looking, looking forward to getting finished, headed back. We asked the the guys Joey and Caden when they joined us a, a little bit earlier about the, the question that I thought was my at least my biggest takeaway from your press conference in the main stage area. And the guys were asked about 
you know, despite all the commotion and I'm sure a lot of people reaching out and showing interest in Joey and Caden specifically after the years they had a year ago, they wanted to come back to Boone. And I thought each of them gave a great answer in terms of why. But you were standing up there next to them, hearing them answer those questions. What were you thinking about as you listened to them? And then what's your, your take on those guys deciding to stick around? Yeah, we had about six or seven, to be honest with you. It came down to the last week or the last day of the, the portal was open that had opportunities to leave. And, and I do believe we, we recruit the right kind of kids at App. And we call them OKGs, our kind of guys. And, um, of course, they had a chance to make more money, et cetera, but they wanted to come here and, and finish the mission. And the mission is to win a championship this year. And, again, I can't be more proud of the way they answered the question because, again, they, they do care about their teammates. They they worry more about winning and being great teammates than they do uh, any kind of single accolade they could possibly get. The player of the year all-conference. It's more than that. And, again, they know if a team does well, they'll do well, and, and the, the rest will be uh, as it goes. But just two great ambassadors for our program. We have many. Those are just two of, of, of the ones we have. So back I picked 25 more and been the same answer. When you talked about recruiting the kind of the right kind of people that do that, once once they're in Boone, once they're on the mountain, what are some of the things that you think help? With that oh, I think Doug Gillen calls it stickiness of guys that want to stay, whether it's camaraderie or you know just common mission, just some of the things Boone has to offer that you think is added to that mix. Well, it goes back to the recruiting process, and we tell people up front if you're looking for the city life, the nightlife, and Boone's not the place for you. If you want to come here and get a world class uh, degree and play for championships year in and year out, then this is the place for you. And we were, were up front and honest. You know what makes you know, App special is the people and and the town of Boone. Uh, they really embrace our football program. Our players are out. They say hello to them. Our players interact. They get they're involved in the community service projects. Just just the things it takes um, and to. to to play at a high level, to be great people, that's what it's about. And just uh, our administration uh, takes care of our players in every way they possibly can. Doug's been fantastic, give them extra meals, whatever it takes to to you know, you know make it special for them. We try to do all we can, and again, we treat our players the right way. I mean, we, we want we truly want what's best for them. And every decision we make, every decision I make as a, as, a, as the head coach, always puts the players first. And I think that uh, has paid dividends throughout this uh, transfer portal. I feel like when it comes to preseason and whether people are doing polls in conference or the top 25 poll, projecting who, which teams are going to do well, a lot of times the first thing you look at is how many players do you have returning and at what key positions. But I, I, this program is in such a unique opportunity this fall because not only do you have so many great players coming back, plus the ones you've added, um, but same head coach and same coordinators. You haven't really experienced that in, in such a long time and ne never in your tenure. What does it mean to have the stability not only with the roster of players but it, with the with the coaching staff this year? It's it's huge. You know, this is the first year since I've been the head coach. I've kept uh, both coordinators, and this year they were one of 25 teams in the country to return all three coordinators, Coach Ponce, Coach Sloan, Coach Haynes, the head football coach, and the starting quarterback. Mm -hmm. So that does give you an opportunity to, to be successful uh, in the upcoming season. But that all it does is gives you an opportunity, gives you a chance. Right. Now we have to go out and put the work in, which I know we will. That's just in their DNA. Our kids, um, there's never been a question with their work ethic and how they go about their business. So, again, we have the, the right pe right pieces in place. Now we have to go out and execute, prepare, stay healthy, and get ready for ETSU. I guess going from that reset men's mentality from last year, and you know, Coach Greenhall was new at that point. Um, some some new coaches and stuff like that. Is there was there a different kind of off season? approach or mentality was hey when we release these guys to coach Greenhall like he's got a, a off season already under his belt with this crew on a large part was did it feel any different uh, just kind of well, in your, the mission you wanted for that yeah our, our players knew what to expect the first year coach Greenhall really had to set the tempo of the weight room and you know we have a five minute rule we have to be there five minutes before uh, your workout session starts and just how things go about and he runs a tight ship and that's what we need now fast forward one year now the players are returning, they can explain to the new guys what to expect. And so that's been big. It was not such a, the learning curve what is big. And, you know, we talk to kids that come in and the new kids the first time in our program, they'll come to my office and say, I've never worked this hard in my life. Well, that's what we do. 
And that, that's what gives, makes us be successful. That makes us different. We ran Appalachian Ski Mountain for the first uh, summer session, and I walked and about died. So I know what they were about to go, what they were going through. But that's what makes it special. That's what makes us different. That's what makes us us and you know, unique. So uh, Friday morning, we're in Howard's now. Friday morning, we'll let them go for a few days and get back. Report on Thursday and practice Friday. It's it's wild that that we're already at that stage of the summer and the off season. You'll do Howard's Knob with them on Friday, I'm sure, right? Maybe, maybe. <laughs> Depends. It's, been, it's been a rough summer. It, it has, yeah. Uh, okay, well, let's 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 talk about that for a moment. What have been some of your highlights from the summer when you did get a chance to, to get away? What are some of the highlights from Sean Clark's summer? Well, it's, 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 we're in a unique situation now in our lives with uh, our, my daughter Gianna, who's 15, a freshman in high school, and my son Brax, who's 12. Uh, Gianna has practice Tuesday through Thursday at 7 a.m. to 10 o'clock in the morning, so your morning's right up. My son Braxton had baseball on Monday, football Tuesdays and Thursdays, so <laughs> our vacation window has really narrowed down a little bit, but we did have some time. They had a dead week, went to the lake for a few days, had a chance to go to the beach for a couple of days, kind of unwind a little bit, but you know, we were, we were trying to wrap up the, the, some loose ends of the lake this past weekend, got back about 6 o'clock Sunday night, we flew down here on Monday morning, so it's uh, one of those situations that it's here, and uh, it's, it's exciting. I've never been more excited than right now to be the head football coach at App. I just think we have a bunch of special people in that building, in our building. Uh, coaches pulling the rope in the right direction. And we have a great fan base. We sold out season tickets for three years in a row now. Mm-hmm. Now we're selling single game tickets. So uh, there's not one ticket left for the Liberty game. Um, can and guarantee- it's only July. <laughs> it's only July. I, I can almost guarantee App Nation will buy them all up. So it's a, it's a great atmosphere to play college football. It's great for recruiting. And you know, we just can't thank the fans enough for all they do for App State football. With the schedule in college sports just being more busy with hardly any real breaks with the calendar and the way recruiting works and the portal and everything. How do you approach that with your staff to make sure, hey, we're going to work hard and we're going to work efficiently, but you're also a father, a husband, and to try to have that from the top down and get the right message across for, for some, some a semblance of life balance for those folks? No, that's a fair question. And, you know, I tell our coaches all the time, do not miss a kid's baseball game or a recital or or a dance, you can always come back to work. You know, just because you're not there at, from six in the evening till nine in the evening, I mean, you can come back at eleven o'clock at night and, and finish your work. So I think that's that's one of the reasons our coaches don't leave as much. I do value family. I, I, there, you can do both. I've worked with some coaches that that you work till midnight, one in the morning, and then come back at six. So I just value um, the family aspect of it. You can get a new job, you can't get a new family, and, and that's important to me. And to be there for my kids when they're sports and since you're the head coach you can schedule spring practice you can schedule what workouts are yeah. so i get a chance to to uh watch them play their sports and, and that's what i'm gonna remember most of all and we've had some great wins here but i'm gonna remember a volleyball tournament in severeville tennessee or a baseball tournament in charlotte those are things i'm gonna remember and uh, so just continue to do the right things be a good husband get a good dad and be a good role model for our kids Matt Greenhall was speaking highly about that atmosphere and that culture that's been created because he's got two very young kids right now and said, you know, his opportunity to bring his oldest out to workouts and the weight room and just be around all of it so he can spend time with him and vice versa. It's just uh, I, I, that I think you can hear it in everybody's voice that's affiliated with the program that has young children, um, how much they value that. No, so. it's, it's, it's a great because you can do both. You can be a dad and a great football coach. Yeah. And uh, that's part of it's probably more important than being a great football coach than a great dad. We need more great dads in this world. Yeah, yeah. Well, you, you're certainly one of them yourself. Um, on the offensive line, I know that's probably been a question you've got a lot around here, and uh, I'd love to give uh, you the opportunity to speak to our audience and our fans about what makes you believe that this offensive line will continue to uphold the, the, the tradition of success that that line has had over the years at App State, despite the fact that you know there's no preseason recognition for these guys, but you know how good that they can be. Well, there's, there's two things, the players and Coach Cummings. I think we have one of the most elite offensive line coaches in the country. He plays. He holds his players accountable in every aspect of their lives, from academics to football to off the field. Our players have a strong uh, desire to be great. They have a great work ethic. And again, we knew this was coming. We knew it was happening because we were losing players. If it was a December signing period, we were losing three and four offensive linemen per year 
to decommitting and going to a, a Power 5 program. So we knew this was coming, so we had a great plan for it. Uh, this year we were very intentional how we, we signed kids out of the transfer portal. We made sure we knew who the position coach was. And I knew some of the head coaches. And if, if you call and ask, uh, they'll give you honest opinions and their honest answers. And we did that. And if we didn't know the head coach or the offensive line coach, we knew someone on the staff. And again, guys that we trust. There were several players in the recruiting process we knew we know knew we didn't know anybody on their staff and we just bypassed it. We passed on because I think it's important <clears throat> excuse me, that you get the right kind of people in your locker room. With the transfer portal the way it is now, the biggest thing you can do is destroy your culture and have locker room lawyers. And we didn't want that. So uh, we made sure we were intentional how we did things. And I feel very confident with the players in there right now to be successful. It's going to be a great motivation tool because this is the first time since 2016 we've had zero players, zero offensive linemen um, on the preseason all-conference list. And again, we don't really take a lot of credit to that. But again, if the O-line's listening, this is a challenge. Uh -huh. we got to get it done. <laughs> I mean, just with your background of that position, Coach Cummings' knowledge base, I mean, on paper it seems like the size has been, you know, a, a significant upgrade or just there are bigger bodies. How does that translate into still playing the way that you guys want to play with these bigger frames? <laughs> well, our conference has changed. Uh, we've, this conference is a lot bigger now. When we came in in 2015 and 16, you could get away with being six foot two. 275 pounds. Now the defensive line, they're six foot six, 320, 330s. So you have to get bigger and adjust with times. But the one thing we won't give up is speed. I think that's you, you can't coach athleticism and speed. If you can get one with speed and size, then you really you really does some some great work there. So um, we'll, we'll continue to recruit athletic kids that, that have the potential to get bigger. But like you mentioned this year, we have gotten bigger. We're 300 plus across the board right now on the offensive line, and um, they've been working their tails off. So. Um, we'll be just fine up front. All right, last one for you. When you get back, when we get back to North Carolina, you know, you, there's a couple more days left of the summer workouts, and then we'll have report day and our media day next week. But what's uh, what's on your immediate list of things to do once you get back into North Carolina? You know, we get back uh, late tonight, then tomorrow we have uh, PLPs with our players, and uh, we have a team dinner on Wednesday night. Thursday we have a uh, high school camp. Friday we have a fundraiser for the Yosef Club. Saturday is going to be, what is it, um, who's Saturday? You're going to Brad Paisley? Brad Paisley. He's yeah. a West Virginia guy, man. So I <laughs> a West Virginia guy, you know. And then Sunday we relax, and Monday we're here, and it's going to happen quick. And But, again, we're excited it's here. It seems like it was yesterday yeah. that we were in Florida for the uh, the Cure Bowl, and for a great uh, win, a tropical storm. But it's here now, and uh, looking forward to the season. I have to say one thing. Today is my mom's birthday. So, Mom, happy birthday. Hello love you and I'll talk to you soon. Pressure on Adam to get this published in time for, for all that to not no be problem. late. <laughs> no problem. Great dad and great son. You see that? <laughs> nice job. Um, I got I got one quick follow yeah. um, or not really follow, just one final question. I think it was Ricky Ronnie from ODU who was talking about the college football game and I think we've all agreed it's been cool. App State's rolling it's been cool for the exposure. He mentioned that he thought it was really cool for camaraderie that he's seen guys in the same room just playing together and it's really helped. How has the college football game how have you seen it have an effect as a coach? And I'm sure you played old Madden games back in the day. Or I don't know if Braxton wants to play the new game or what's what's it been like. He, in he grew up on old Tecmo Bowl yeah. like you and me. Super the, Tecmo or regular the Tecmo? Tec <laughs> the technology is a, little, technology's a little bit different when I was in college. Bo Jackson was the man. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, it's I tell you what, it's great. And I mentioned some of the, the interviews I did today. App State was one of 15 schools in the country that was highlighted on the trailer for EA Sports college football. So that's pretty neat in itself, you know, and then have those kids to see themselves playing a game, talking trash, having fun with each other. Now we have to have the conversation about fall camp. You can't be up to <laughs> 12 or 1 o'clock in the morning playing video games. Okay, you have to get your rest, but I think that it's goes all, for you too, Brent. Yeah, yeah, I think it's great. Uh, my son does play it. My son, I am upstairs yelling all the time. He showed me a picture of me in the, in the as a coach, and it looks awful. So, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure what that is, but that was not me. Actually, I was a little scared which was fine, but I mean, um, it's a lot of fun. So, um, again, we're going to embrace it and move on with it. Yeah, well, very cool. Well, 
Uh, thank you so much for your time. And uh, just, man, it's been such a great display of the professionalism and the fun and the chemistry. Uh, App State's showing out so well as they always do here at Media Day. So appreciate the time, man. We'll, uh, we'll see you on the plane going back. Appreciate it. It won't be long. It's be that Friday before ETSU up in the office and yep. giving you the keys to victory and the, on the a great crowd outside and chanting and having a good time. Right so. before another beautiful day in Boone, North Carolina. Beautiful day in Boone, North Carolina. <laughs> Appreciate that. All right, Coach.